best remember the stuff presented by this creepy bear is from the Evolution 101 website, written by the Understanding Evolution Team. Commentary by Rentafriend2000. That's me! Mechanisms of Change Each of these four processes is a basic mechanism of evolutionary change. Mutation. A mutation could cause parents with genes for bright green coloration to have offspring with a gene for brown coloration. That would make genes for brown coloration more frequent in the population than they were before the mutation. A change in the frequency of a trait does not equate to a change in the genes of the individuals. In the example given, the beetles already had genes for brown. This has no bearing on the story above unless it's meant to explain why brown beetles exist in the first place, which in the paragraph they do not attempt to do. Uh, I suppose I can do it for them. Seriously, am I the only person doing any work for the Understanding Evolution team? I'm not even on the team. I'm a temp! Ugh. Okay, so here's how it would work. The beetles start off with only the genetic information for green. Then, somehow, a mutation adds the genetic information necessary for brown pigment to be created in the place of the green pigment. It could be the result of a pre-existing recessive gene, or the brown coloration could simply be the color of a beetle with no pigment, and so this mutation would actually be a loss of the gene which codes for green. Incidentally, this kind of mutation, wherein information is lost, is the only kind of beneficial mutation which has ever been observed. Keep that fact in mind. Migration. Some individuals from a population of brown beetles might have joined a population of green beetles. That would make genes for brown coloration more frequent in the green beetle population than they were before the brown beetles migrated into it. Do I need to say how this doesn't represent new genetic information? The brown beetles who moved into the all-green neighborhood were already brown beetles. They already existed. Let's all take a second and remember that evolution is supposed to explain the process by which bacteria became wolves and cabbages. Uncle Chuck's book wasn't called Moving to a New Neighborhood of the Species. It was Origin of the Species. That is what this theory of his is supposed to explain. Thus, migration doesn't quite do the job. Genetic drift. Imagine that in one generation, two brown beetles happened to have four offspring survive to reproduce. Several green beetles were killed when someone stepped on them and had no offspring. The next generation would have a few more brown beetles than the previous generation, but just by chance. These chance changes from generation to generation are known as genetic drift. Once again, no new genetic information has been produced. So this isn't evolution. You can have as many brown beetles as you like, and it'll never make beetles with ears. For that, you need to add some genetic information. Feel free to verify this scientifically. Put on some boots, go stomp every green beetle you can find, and when all of them are dead, none of the other beetles will have ears. I guarantee it, or your money back. Natural selection. Imagine that green beetles are easier for birds to spot, and hence, eat. Brown beetles are a little more likely to survive to produce offspring. They pass their genes for brown coloration onto their offspring. So in the next generation, brown beetles are more common than in the previous generation. According to the title of Darwin's book, natural selection is supposedly the means by which species originate. At least that's my interpretation of origin of the species by means of natural selection. But as you know, there are so many interpretations, it's impossible to know what Darwin really meant when he wrote that all those years ago. But look at natural selection. It removes part of the population. If this happened often enough and wide enough, it is hypothetically possible that it could cause the loss of an allele permanently, meaning the gene for green would not exist in any surviving beetles. But when all of the green ones are dead, the brown beetles, and stop me if I'm going too fast here, will still be brown beetles. Once again, this is not evolution. You cannot turn bacteria into wolves and cabbage by having some of the bacteria go extinct. Natural selection as a mechanism of evolution is like spending your way out of debt. Um, politicians, please have a business person explain to you why that doesn't work. Furthermore, this idea was not Darwin's, but was taken from the writings of a biblical creationist, Edward Blythe. Blythe wrote about natural selection in 1835 as being a stabilizing element to protect the created kinds from harmful changes, which is exactly what we observe. When a cow is born with five legs, that cow is less likely to survive, which means future generations are not so likely to need that extra roller skate. Of course cows roller skate. Where are you from? Darwin took Blythe's idea of a process by which corruption is removed for the benefit of the species and imagined it as the creative process which created the species in the first place, which of course is nonsense. Natural selection cannot create anything. It is merely quality control. I can't create purple M&Ms by eating all of the green ones, though I would be willing to try. To bring the point home, check out this quote. It must not be forgotten that mutation is the ultimate source of all genetic variation found in natural population and the only new material available for natural selection to work upon. All of these mechanisms can cause changes in the frequencies of genes and populations. This part is true. And so all of them are mechanisms of evolutionary change. This part is not true, even on their weak sauce definition of evolution. 
Seriously, I will keep eating M&Ms until all of you understand this. I don't care how many it takes. However, natural selection and genetic drift cannot operate unless there is genetic variation, that is, unless some individuals are genetically different from others. If the population of beetles were 100% green, selection and drift would not have any effect because their genetic makeup could not change. This part is true. Are you enjoying the vast fluctuation between true and ridiculous? It's a lot like reading the ingredients on Cheetos or Twinkies. Occasionally, you see something real among all the alien substances. In conclusion, let me remind you. What we're trying to explain with all this evolution business is how bacteria can give rise to cabbages and wolves. So while they've just admitted that none of these mechanisms of evolution can work without variations in the genes, what they've forgotten is they're trying to explain where the variation in the genes came from in the first place. Yeah, they think Darwinism is all beetles with ears eating purple M&Ms, when in fact it's just another five-legged cow on roller skates. Metaphorically speaking. Yippee! And join me next time for part 10.